What are rich millennials doing differently? Let's take a look at the money habits of our wealthiest people between the ages of 25 to 40. And I boiled it down to, we're gonna call it three things that rich millennials are doing differently um, from poor millennials. No, not, not poor millennials, just different from everyone else. Uh, and let's set aside any ego here. You know, a lot of people have a tendency to push back. Like, I don't care what richer people my age are doing. They got all the breaks I didn't get. I'm working my tail off over here. I get it. Well, you know, in some cases that may be true, but I think if that's your mentality, you're not totally, you know, setting yourself up for success. These are trends to pay attention to. So, you know, if you'd like to put some more money in that jar on top of your refrigerator, uh, that's where this comes in. First thing rich millennials are doing differently. Number one, they are not risk averse. Uh, if you look into the numbers, you'll find that your average 30 year old person is risk averse. You know, we're used to operating in the margins a little bit. Some of it may be related to living and working through two recessions, but the richest among us invest and take calculated risks. So whether that's investing in businesses or stocks or real estate or Bitcoin, or NFTs, uh, they are risk takers by nature. This doesn't mean that just because you YOLO'd some AMC stock last month when it was hot, that you have the brain of a rich guy, you're a secret rich guy in a poor man's body with, with a poor man's bank account. Um, but we are talking about the rich guy's approach, which brings us to the number two thing rich millennials are doing differently. They make their money work for them. They put their money to work. They don't sit in cash. They're not savers that way. Your average 30 year old person is hoarding cash or at least trying to, um, saving for a down payment on a house, right? You feel like you should be liquid in case the opportunity pops up. So you're sitting in cash, you know, even if you're staring down the barrel of a long process to buy a house, of course, you know? And I, I think the rich millennials, you know, rich young people recognize you are not going to build wealth this way by putting your savings in like a money market account uh, or like a safe safe one where you're getting like a 2% annual return, like you should be investing more aggressively. Take advantage of your company's 401k. Mutual funds are pretty easy to get like eight or 9% returns. And, and with this stuff, I subscribe to the richest man in Babylon theory of like pay yourself first. You know, so this is just a side note. So a lot of people know the feeling of like you get a check and then it's just gone to mortgage, bills, utilities, bang, 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 it's gone. Um, if you start with the investing and pay yourself first, literally first, before any of your creditors, whatever, you know, you will force yourself to adapt with the remaining cash. Third thing rich millennials are doing differently. They know the difference between good debt and bad debt. Our wealthiest counterparts are not carrying massive amounts of student loan debt. Wow, shocking. Um, it's bad debt, it can't be resold. They are carrying, however, massive amounts of mortgage debt. It's tied to an asset. You know, real estate trends upward over the long term. It's a safe investment, especially by comparison. You know, and, and look around now. You know, we have overwhelming demand for housing, people buying houses. So, but yeah, I don't think it should be a shock that rich millennials are not saddled with student loans, you know, whether they paid them themselves or their school was paid for, I don't know, really, I don't care. This is just the profile. Um, so to summarize, three things that rich millennials are doing differently. Number one, they are not risk averse. Number two, they make their money work for them. And number three, they know the difference between good debt and bad debt. Obviously, this is not like a step-by-step -step plan, but it's a philosophy. And if you want to, I guess, compete, you wanna know what the best practice is, what the sharpest people are doing, like trends in the NFL. I do a lot of bad sports analogies. Um, but in, in today's NFL, right, you need to have linebackers that can cover or you're at a major disadvantage. You wanna have like a, a slot corner or someone to cover the, the tight end or you're at a disadvantage, a quarterback who can move in the pocket a little bit. You know, and if your coach is Mike Singletary, okay, now we're get, really getting like way off the rails, but like, a really stubborn old school head coach, you are going to be so philosophically behind the rest of the league. This is actually a pretty good analogy for the record. I brought it back at the end. You see what I did there? Um, but if you feel like 
you know, you're behind in this. The lesson is not to go out and buy Bitcoin, <laughs> but it is to take an active role in investing. And also, no surprise, you know, identify your bad debt, your worst debt, and attack it. Go after it. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.